Sometimes I can't believe it's been a year and two months since I finished chemotherapy. I think this may be due to the fact that I'm still in active maintenance treatment with immunotherapy and I've continued on at the hospital in a similar treatment cycle every three weeks. Physically, however, most would never know what I have been through. My hair length is at a point where it just looks like I cut it into some short, cute new style and the distortion I took on from the swelling from steroids associated with chemotherapy has vanished and most would consider I am back to normal. I've thought a lot about my experience with chemotherapy though and sometimes I wonder if there was anything I would have done differently looking back. And I thought I would share some thoughts with you. It's a bit chaotic but I hope it offers whoever needs to hear it much support and help. I, I think that it's so important if you can to continue moving your body. I just finished my workout and I'm on day six of post immunotherapy. So I definitely feel like my body is coming back. It's usually about day three to five that I've noticed I start to feel kind of off and sick. So <coughs> I usually just walk maybe the first day the day after and then the following day I can still work out and then the day three through six or five I feel pretty crummy on immunotherapy and so I just do walks and rest a little bit more but now I'm revving back up and I'm able to do more strength training cardio I don't do a whole lot of in general because I just don't feel like my body responds well to cardio as opposed to strength training and Pilates and, and all that stuff. So I would go on long walks throughout chemotherapy. The week after treatment, I would start incorporating some like weight training again. And I, I think it just makes a world of a difference in your mobility and joint pain. So definitely, definitely recommend if you can um, and you know how to do it on your own, do it on your own. Otherwise, I'd go seek out a professional to help you during that time to just keep moving. Something I've learned is that a lot of people have mighty big opinions and like to share them without taking into consideration that everybody's bodies are different and no two people are exactly the same. We might be a lot alike on a biological level, but over time, a lot of us develop things like dietary allergies and go through surgeries and all of these things take a toll on our bodies, which make them function differently. Take it all with a grain of salt and do your due diligence on seeing what works for you. So as far as diet and nutrition go during chemo, I think that this is how I would probably go back and do it. Although I do think I did a pretty good job, but like on my chemo weeks, <coughs> on my chemo weeks, it was kind of like a free for all for the most part. I do know enough about diet and nutrition that the better you eat, the better you're gonna feel. So even when you're going through something like chemotherapy, I would bring really healthy snacks with me. I would also have people make me meals and I really didn't have a whole lot of control over that. Hold on, I gotta put my, my breakfast in the frying pan. I think that for me, the rule of thumb and what I feel like I did a pretty good job was the week of treatment, I just ate what sounded good because you're literally just trying to survive that week. But then the two weeks following treatment, I would try to clean things up a bit and eat in a way that I knew, I knew worked well for my body. Um, if you're new here, then you don't know that right now I'm, I'm eating more carnivore because I'm trying to figure out some arthritic pain from, I think both treatment and immunotherapy that I'm on now. So I done a little bit of learning into carnivore and it just seemed to work. Yeah, I think that when you are going through treatment, a lot of diet or a lot of doctors will just say, eat whatever you can to just get through this. But I do think the better you eat, the better you will feel through treatment. Although I know that that's not always possible and you're literally just eating what you can to get through it. So I think it's a balance. Like I, I highly recommend the week of treatment, doing what you can, the two weeks following treatment when you start to feel better, just getting back on some kind of protocol that gives you a lot of energy and makes you feel the best.
to or leave a comment on my one of my old videos from the first chemo that I did and I must have shown that I was eating peanut butter and honey in it because she was just so rude and just like left this comment in all caps which I'm not sure she realizes that that's like the equivalent of being shouted at and she's like aren't you aware that you're not supposed to have any sugar blah 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 and peanut butter is a no and I'm like chill lady like First of all, they don't give you any kind of nutritional advice. You sit down with the, the lead nurse and they basically tell you, just eat what is going to get you through. It wasn't that I wasn't necessarily aware of no sugar, it was that I just didn't give a you know what because I was just eating what I could and what sounded good. is <laughs> there are so many different diets out there and they're all claiming to be the the magical solution for whatever whatever ailment you're dealing with and that's why you kind of have to just like play around with things maybe sorry i'm having a hot flash in Whew, sweaty but sometimes you your body might work really really well on carnivore like right now for me but that's for me not a realistic long-term solution and i need more variety the long haul but i also am totally willing to do this until i figure out what it is that's giving me a lot of pain i like experimenting some people thrive on a plant-based diet i was plant-based for five years by the end of it i was really really struggling and it was not working for me at all and my um i have hypothyroidism or hashimoto's now and i it, i think it is the reason that it turned into hashimoto's because i was eating such a heavy grain diet and i still enjoy eating that way but i just know now that it doesn't work for my body i love cooking that way i think that it's so fun to think outside of the box and try to cook in a way that is like i love finding meat-based meals and then figuring out how to make them plant-based like I, I really truly love that but at the end of the day like i want to live a pain-free life so that's my thought on diet and nutrition during chemo and for life so this one might be a little unconventional but i don't know if it's unconventional is the right word but i would really I would really try to not uh, beat myself up as much as I did for needing to rest a lot. And I know that might not, I don't know, that'll make a lot of sense to people, but I am very much a doer. Like my energy style is that I, when I'm lit up by something, I am just like on fire, unstoppable. And so if I have a lot of ideas going on in my head, I typically need to get up and do them. So I remember being on the couch a lot and just being so frustrated because I had all of these things I, I wanted to be out doing and I just energetically couldn't. I have this funny tendency to sometimes be like, oh my God, is this gonna be how it's how it's going to be forever even though i know what i'm going through is very temporary so i um definitely would looking back give myself a lot more permission just to rest really lean into that a lot more because it is a incredibly needed you need a lot of rest when you're going through chemo. B, anytime you're sick, it's one of the times in your life that you just almost have a whole pass to just give yourself a lot of time to lay around and rest and watch TV. There's very little books, book reading happening um, during that time because your brain is just not functioning the way it normally does. 
if you're going through that right now, I know how frustrating it is to just feel like all you're doing is laying around doing nothing, uh, especially if you're like me and you get a lot of joy out of doing the things that are like buzzing around in your head. This will pass and you'll be back doing the things you love. And what your body needs right now is to just be still and rest and sleep and zone out, numb, numb out watching TV and shows and movies and because you will most more than likely be back out doing the things that you love. And I do wanna say I'm not trying to be dismissive of what you're going through because I, I know how frustrating it is. I know how heartbreaking it is and how, how much at times it feels like, why is this, why is this happening to me? And when everybody else is out living their lives and I'm only trying to offer some of the thoughts that I had when I was going through this and now looking back and thinking, I totally understand where I was at that point in time, but I wish I had had the, the fortitude to just be like, Amanda, chill, you're gonna be okay and you'll be out there before you know it. So that's, that's all I'm trying to offer you. So something else I would definitely explore more is the usage of wigs. And prior to being diagnosed with cancer, I think I thought about it a lot. I definitely think I would have worn wigs a lot more than I actually did. And one of the reasons I think that I didn't wear wigs a whole lot was because I work for myself and I work from home and I work out in my garage just my shop and I'm using saws all the time and so it just there was no reason really for me to wear one so I didn't have a professional setting that I had to go to where I felt like I needed to present myself in a way however if that was different I think I would have definitely explored wearing them a lot more I did get a bright pink wig for my niece's fifth birthday and that was a lot of fun to wear although it was just a cheap synthetic wig off of Amazon and by probably halfway through the birthday party I had ripped it off and just put on a little do-rag because it got so hot. But there are so many good quality wigs out there, Wig She, and they sent me this beautiful wig here a few months ago this was custom made for my head sorry it is not in the best shape at the moment because i have not been actively wearing wigs but i did wear this one to my niece's sixth birthday here's a picture for you and it was so much fun i felt so beautiful in it and um, it was actually a Taylor Swift themed birthday party. And so we had to pick a different era. I can't remember the era specifically that I picked, but it was a little bit more of like emo style. So I put this wig on, put a beanie on top of it, and it looked adorable. I wore it the whole time. I didn't feel hot and uncomfortable or scratchy. I really, really, really loved it. And I look forward to wearing it for something fun in the future. And the great thing about uh, Wig Sheet is that they prioritize quality in both their product and their customer service and that is something that I value so much just knowing that I'm getting something that is of the best quality and that I also have people I can contact if I have questions and knowing that they will be super responsive is everything when I'm dealing with such personal products like something like a wig when you're going through cancer treatment is is really important wig she has given me a special code for you it is sawdust 10 go ahead and use that at checkout you will get a little discount so thank you so much to wig she for this beautiful wig i am really really grateful for it i would love to see you in your wigs if you get one i would have utilized more of the nonprofits out there that are meant to support that are meant to support cancer patients i think that when you're in the midst of cancer it's really hard to want to sit down and research all of these programs if you're dealing with breast cancer or ovarian cancer i found one called unite her that is amazing and when you sign up you get sent a gift box full of all of these uh, amazing natural and organic products i got sent a cookbook and this uh, i think another more spiritual based book and it was really it was really nice to have this to look forward to and then you also get something called a passport and 
you have six squares that you can use on a ton of different things like cooking classes. I got a sun basket sent to me, which is a meal delivery service. You can also get farm box full of vegetables and fruits. Um, it really is such a wonderful nonprofit and it's all free. Another really amazing thing I went to was a retreat called Harmony Hill. This was three days. My mom and I went together and it was one of the most phenomenal experiences I think I've ever had in regards to this whole cancer world I find myself in. Um, it's free other than your travel. It was life changing. I'll link that below as well. The reality is there are a lot of resources out there for us. They're just not well known. You have to do a little digging and research, but you can also ask your providers and your social worker for some recommendations as well. I feel like I did a pretty good job doing during this time was just asking for what I need. And I would say this comes with experience and time. I knew that I couldn't do everything on my own. I have a dog, I have a cat, I have a business, and my, I had such little time and energy to go into everything that I had friends come walk my dog. A woman follows me on Instagram, reached out to me, and she was walking my dog for a little while. She's a professional dog walker and she was just doing it to help me. I had people offer to bring me meals and bring me meals, but I think one of the best things that I did for myself was create a cancer gift registry. I just put it up on my website. I have a personal website for my my business i basically just connected my venmo my paypal connected my amazon wish list i also created a whole area where i shared what my dietary restrictions are what i enjoyed eating i think that often when we go through something like this the last thing we want to do is ask people to give us stuff you'll never know if you don't ask and i think that a lot of people do want to help so it's important to just tell people what you need. You're in an incredibly unfortunate situation. Uh, you know, one thing that's so important, if you don't have very many people in your social circle around you, or if you don't live close to your family, you are gonna have to lean on other people in your life to take you to all of your appointments, like chemotherapy. So I think that as much as we don't want to ask for help, because we kind of just, I think a lot of us want people just to read our minds, we have to just, we have to, we have to ask for help. There's nothing shameful about it. Those are everything that I could think of. I'm sure more will come as time goes by. Let me know down below and you found valuable um, during your experience going through treatment and chemotherapy. And I will continue sharing as I continue to heal from this. But as always, if there's something you wanna know or learn or hear about, feel free to leave a comment below and I'd be happy to share. If you feel inclined, make sure to follow and hit the bell so that you get notified when I put out a new video and I will see you next time. Bye.